Okay, so welcome to chapter 3 of our Structural Theory course. In this chapter, Ayan. So, in this chapter, ang pag-aaralan natin ay yung Wait lang, I'll redistract ako sa mga DJ tayo. Okay, so ang pag-aaralan natin dito ay tatlo. So we have the analysis of the simple process, the analysis of um, compound and complex, and they are both coplanar, and the analysis of space thrust. Hindi ko nabasahin yung objective natin na sa module yun na nun. Para mas save yung time natin. So, in lesson 1, we have the traces, definition, the types, assumption, and classification of traces, determinacy, and stability of traces. So, for the definition, the truss is one of the major types of engineering structure which provides a practical and economical solution for many engineering constructions, especially in the design of bridges and buildings that demand large spans. They consist of straight members, it is bars connected with the extremities to joints, therefore no member is continuous to joints. So all members lie in one plane if we are talking about the coplanar chassis. And sabi dito, are only concentrated forces that act on the joints and lie in the same plane. So, if we have the stress, so for it is stress not enough, simple lang. It lies on one plane, and sino sabi dun na? If we are going to apply the loads, the loads must be applied only on the joints. Hindi tayo pwedeng mag-apply ng load dun sa pagitan. No? Hindi yan pwede. Hindi rin pwede dun. No? Sa joints lang tayo pwedeng mag-apply. And, sinasabi din dun na this pin here, eto tong mga joints na to, are considered pin. No? So, pin, ito sila. And pwede natin niyang i-isolate later. And kapag i-isolate natin siya, of course, ang may expose natin dito is either no, a compressed force or a tensile force. So, axial lang ang ating stresses. When a concentrated load is to be applied between two joints or distributed load is to be supported by the truss, as in the case of the bridge truss, a floor system must be provided in order to transmit the loads to the joints. So, kung in case naman ng bridge truss, kung yung bridge truss yung pinag-uusapan natin, kung may floor system tayo, ito yung deck. So, this is the deck slab. It spells this way. No? So, yung load neto will be transmitted to the beams and that loads will be transmitted to the girders. No? Bago natin siya itatapon doon sa process. Although the members are actually joined together by means of bolted or welded connection, it is assumed that they are pinned together. No? So for the trusses, no, sa steel or sa timber, may bolted din naman sa, sa timber. 
and sa steel, no? Sa per se, ito yung gasset plate. And ito yung isang member ng brass. Ito yung isang member. So, although kahit welded ito, or kahit ito ay bolted connection, no? Ang consideration natin dito, steel, no? Pin pa rin siya. Hindi natin siya i-consider na fixed. Kasi usually, kapag welded, fixed. No? So, ang assumption natin dito, always, pin pa din. And in the later part, dito ko na sabihin, no? So, kung itong member na to, itong member na to, and this member here, no? And this member, in this part, should be concurrent at this point. And dito tayo magkukonsider ng pin. Doon sa point na kung saan siya concurrent. So, the forces acting at each member are only axial without the existence of the bending moment or the shear force. So, nabanggit ko na kanina na yung member would only have axial forces. Pag sinabing axial forces, this is normal. Normal means, from the deformable, the force must be perpendicular, no? perpendicular to the cross-section of the member, if this is the member. No? So, if the force is towards dito sa ating pin, then this is a compressive force, no? like this one. And this is tensile. Each member can be treated as two force member in which the two forces are applied at the ends of it. The two forces are necessarily equal and opposite and collinear for equilibrium. So, if this is the member, yung kanyang stress, let's say this is the stress, tension, this is tension. Etong dalawang to is collinear. Kung ano yung direction nitong ating member, that would be the direction ng reaction. And kung anong value nito, yun din yung value nitong isa. No? Kasi this should be equal para magkaroon tayo ng equilibrium. Okay, so the entire truss can therefore be considered as a group of pins or and two force members, which obviously either in tension or compression. Nabanggit ko na rin siya kanina. The basic element of a plane truss is a triangle. Three joined by the pins at either ends constitute to a rigid frame. The structure may be extended by addition of the bars through a joint to form a rigid, non-collapsible structure. So, Ang pinaka-minimum natin is a triangle. Meron tayong tatlong tatlong member at meron tayong tatlong joints. So, sinasabi dito na if we are going to add no? if we are going to add two members, mag a tayo ng isang joint. No? Still, this part here will be forming a triangle. No? So, kung mag add ulit tayo, then dalawang member, isang joint. So, mag a ulit tayo doon, you have to produce dalawang member and one joint. So, next, pag-uusapan natin yung common types of chassis. We only have two types of chassis. This is the roof truss and yung bridge truss. In general, the roof load is transmitted to the truss by a series of purlins. The roof truss along with its supporting columns. No? So, kung ito, yung loads natin, no? so, if this is the roofing, yung bubong natin, meron tong Berlins. 
yung perlins yung pinagpapakuan ng bubong. Sila ay itatransmit ngayon doon sa loads natin will be transmitted to the top cord. Ito yung top cord, yung, yung part na to. This is the top cord. Sila yung magtatransmit dito. And that loads, no? And this point here will be considered as your joints. So, ang nakikita natin dito, this is, ano, this is steel. So, from the roofing, yung load natin sa roof, ay itatransmit sa purlins. And from the purlins, that would be transmitted to the top cords. And para naman dito sa bottom cord, all the sailing loads, no? yung mga sailing loads natin, yun naman yung itatapon dun sa my bottom cords. And you have here the word span and the word bay. No? Ano pinagkaiba ng span sa bay? So, kung ito yung structure, no? so ito yung structure, let's say yan, may post-it doon. Let's say, ito yung truss. And this part, you have here your truss. And dito sa dulo, ito naman yung truss sa dulo. Ngayon, itong lapad na to, ito yung tinatawag nating span. Tapos yung pagitan, yung distance sa pagitan, itong dalawang trusses, no? o sa pagitan ng dalawang poste, ito naman yung tinatawag nating bay. O, so yun yung pinagkaiba ng span sa bay. And as you can see here, we have the gasset plate. At ito yung sinabi ko kanina. Although, nakikita natin dito that the members of the truss is bolted. You have here the bolted connections. Still, it will be considered as a pin. And this point, no, is the point, yung joint niya. No? Kasi doon, sa part na yon, doon concurrent yung mga members natin. No? So itong members sa baba at itong isang members sa baba. Dito sila concurrent. And this would be that joint. Yun yung gagamitin natin for the computation. And we have here some of the samples, no? No, bakit nagkaroon ng mga pangalan yung chasses? Kasi marami tayong types ng chasses. Yung mga binigay ko dyan sa modules nila. So, we have first the Pratt Chass. Pag sinabing Pratt Chass, this truss was patented in 1844 by two Boston Railway engineers. Ito yung mag-ama na no? si Caleb Pratt at saka si Thomas Willis Pratt. Yung design na to, um, hindi ba nakaka-bother yung ingay ng grass cutter na grass cutter kasi dito banda sa office? Okay lang? Hindi naman siya masyadong maingay. Hindi naman po sila. Okay, okay. So, si Pratra, sinasabi niya dito that the design uses vertical beams for compression and horizontal beams to respond to tension. What is remarkable about this style is that it remained popular even as it would give way to iron and steel. No, the iron gave way to steel. Pag sinabing Pratras, magkaiba kasi ito, no? Kung napansin ninyo dun sa may ano, kung, kung nag-compare kayo ng mga mukha. Pag meron tayong roof truss, ito yung mukha ng how eh. Ito yung mukha ng how. Tapos, ang Prat, kabaliktaran niya. I'm sorry. Ito naman yung mukha ng ano, ng prat. Yung prat, dun siya nag-meet sa taas, no? So, si how, dun siya nag-meet sa baba. This is the prat, and this is the how. Pero pagdating natin, this is for the roof, no? Pagdating natin, dun sa may bridge truss, magpapalit siya. Ito na ngayon si prat, ito naman si how. No? Kaya hindi basihan yung mukha. Ano yung, ano yung ano doon? Ano yung basis? Tingnan natin dito. Sinasabi ni Pratt, sabi niya, the design uses vertical 
beams for compression and horizontal for tension. No? Yung mga vertical, ang diagonal yung, yung horizontal nyo. No? Itong mga vertical, no? sinasabi dun that all the vertical response compression. No? Compression sila. Tapos itong mga diagonals na to, they are tension. Tension to, tension yun. Tension, this is tension, this is tension. Tension din, tension yan. Pero balik ta dyan pagdating kay how. Ang kay how, ito yung mga tension. No? Yung vertical, sinasabi dito sa ano, sinasabi dito kay how. The vertical and the diagonal, sabi niya doon, opposite daw siya kay Pratt. In contrast of the Pratt, the Pratt rather, the diagonal web member are in compression and the vertical are in tension. No? So, ito nga yun, yung mga vertical, naka-tension ito. Tapos, ito yung mga compression, yung mga diagonal members. Kung maalala nyo, when I was in elementary, yung trust namin, wala kasing kaysa may yung school namin. No? Yung itsura ng trust ay ganito. Ganitong ganito talaga siya. Tapos, uh, kahoy. No? Timber siya yung trust. Pero, ang pinag... Iba nun, ganito yung mukha. No? So, kung ito yung trust, Ito so, naalala ko pa din yung mukha ng trust namin elementary kami. Yan. Lahat to kahoy. Kahoy to. Ayan, kahoy din to. Kahoy to. Kahoy yan. Maliban dito kay king post. Yung king post, round bar. No? Ito, ginamitan nila ng round bar. Ano yung reason? Yung bakal kasi ay matiba yan pagdating sa tension. And sa design na to kay How, itong king post na to is in tension. So, sa halip na gumamit siya ng kahoy dito na malaki, no? gumamit na lang siya ng round bar kapalit ng no? kahoy. Kasi tension naman, no? yung nilalabanan niya. So, mas nagtipid siya. Okay, and the Warren Trust is patented in 1848 by the designer James Warren and Wello B. Tobag Manzani. So this trust is consists of the longitudinal members joined only by the angle cross members. So, makikita nyo naman dito sa mukha ng, ano mukha ng Warren sa next page natin. Later, i the discuss na ta. Balikan lang natin. Where is Warren? This one is Warren. No? Ito to. Okay. So, balikan natin to. Ito yung mga parts. Ito yung mga parts ng timber truss. No? Uh, ginawa ko to sa AutoCAD. Isa to sa mga plano na ginawa ko nakaraan. Timber yung ginamit nila. Ayan. So, Ano-ano yung makikita natin doon? Wedge roll. Pag sinabing wedge roll, ito yung bubong. No? Yung ganun. Yung bubong. Sa pinakataas. Yun, wedge roll. And the color plate. Si color plate, ito yon Yung balagbag na yan. Sinabi niya dito, dalawa. Bakit dalawa? Kasi kung, kung ito yan, kabilaan, may nakaipit yan eh. Dito sa kabilang side, na no, kung kung i ganito yung section natin ito yung color plate sorry ito yung color plate sa kabila tapos ito naman yung color plate sa kabila kung nakatingin tayo dito sa side na to no kabila niya nakaipit yan that's why two and then corrugated GI sheet roofing no so sky sa tagalog yero yan Tapos, you have the web member. Pag sinabing web member, ano na po yan? Kasama yan yung diagonal at saka yung mga ibang vertical. Usually, itong gitna, tinatawag natin king post. At itong mga gilid, tinatawag natin queen post. No? These are the queen. Ito naman, queen yung dalawang yan. Ito yung king sa gitna. 
Pero kung marami na, in general, itong mga diagonal na maliliit at saka vertical na maliliit, sila yung tinatawag natin web members. No? Sila yung mga web members. Shoeplates naman, minsan tinatawag din nila itong fish plate. Ang shoeplates, ito naman yung pang-ipit natin, no? Pang-ipit natin doon sa mga members na to. Kabilaan to meron. That's why nakikita natin dito dalawa. Okay. And we have the bottom cord. Si bottom cord, dalawa rin to. Kasi kabilaan din. Kung ang top cord isa lang, ang bottom cord natin dalawa. Meron dyan. At meron dito sa kabila. So kung titingnan natin sa section na to, Ayan. So, may bottom cord tayo dito. Ano ba kung bakas mo? So, yung bottom cord dito sa kabila and meron siya dito sa kabila rin. And we have the purlins, no? Yung purlins po, yun yung pinagpapakuan ng yero. Kung ito yung ito yung ating trusses, yan. Ang purlins, ito yun, yung mga ganon. Yan. Ang tawag sa kanila, purlins. No? Sa construction, usually, ang mga, mga, tawag doon, carpentero, tawag na doon, purlins. Pero walang, walang G yun. It's purlins, not purlins. No? So, pag lumabas kayo, during the actual field na, at marinig niyong purlins, uh, purlins po yung ibig nilang sabihin dyan. So, wag nyo na silang i-correct. Kasi yun na rin yung, uh, gusto nyo i-correct, okay lang. Okay. Manong, it's purlins, not purlins, no? So, pero okay lang kung ano, hindi naman. Kasi yun ang kasanayan nila eh. Yun yung mga tinatawag natin layman's term. Okay. And we have the sailing joist. So, yung sailing joist naman, ito naman po yung pinagpapakuan nung, ano, nung kesame natin. Those are the sailing joist. Sailing board, yun yung kesame mismo. And the fascia board naman, ito yung mga dulo, yung sinipa. Ayan, yung fascia board. Meron pa ba ako nakalimitan? Bottom board, tapos meron tayo. Okay, so yun lang. Ayan. So, bridge truss naman, the load is transmitted by the deck to the series of stringers and then steps of the floor beams. And the floor beams are supported by two parallel trusses. The supporting trusses are connected top and bottom the lateral bracing. Additional stability may be provided by portal and sway bracing. No? So, from the deck, I... So, ito sa load na ito ha, sa pag-transmit na ito ng load. From the deck to the stringers, and then to the beams, tapos itatapon na ngayon yung mga loads dito sa trusses. So, ito yung sample ng mga trusses no, na bridge truss, yung malalaki. No? Usually, mahahaba yung span. So, ito na tayo. Yung sinabi ko kanina, pag si Pratt, Pag sa bridge, yung prat, nag na siya sa baba. Tapos, yung how, nag na siya sa taas. Yun yung kabaliktaran, no? Nung mukha, nung sa roof truss at saka dito sa bridge truss. So, last time, sa roof, no? Sa roof truss, we have this as our how truss and Sa roof truss, this how is the brad truss naman. So what are the assumptions for the truss design? To design both the members and connections of the truss, the force in each member for a given loading must be determined. And meron tayong dalawang important assumptions na kailangan natin i-consider. Number one, all members are connected at both ends by smooth frictionless pins. No? So, nabanggit ko yun kanina na kung ito yung ating process, dapat yung assumption natin dito ay mga smooth pins. No? 
So even if our truss is welded or bolted yung connection pagdating sa steel, no? Steel, ang ating assumption dito ay mga pins pa din yan. The stress produced in, the, uh, in these elements are called the primary stress. No? Yung mga primary stress na tinutukoy dito, ito yung halimbawa, ito, kunin natin isang member na to. Sa member na yan, we have either a compression or a tensile no, na stress. Itong mga to, yung compressive stress na yan, and itong tensile stress na to, sila ay kinukonsider natin as primary stresses. No? Ano naman yung secondary stress? Secondary stress, ito naman yung mga nagkakos ng bending. No? Pag nagkakaroon ng bending. Pero, in our assumptions, no, dito ay hindi natin yan kinukonsider yung mga secondary stresses. Number two, all loads are applied at joints. So, member weight is negligible. Kasi, kumbaga, yung weight ng member ay masyado na siyang maliit kumpara doon sa stresses. So, yung mga loads ay ina-apply natin no, dito sa joints. And kung i-consider man natin yung weight, hindi natin siya ina-apply doon kasi usually kapag meron tayong member na ganyan, ito consider natin yung weight. Usually yung weight nilalagay natin doon sa gitna kasi nandoon yung centroid. Pero in our case, kung talagang hindi maiwasan na kailangan i-consider yung weight, no? Doon natin siya i-apply pa rin sa joints, no? Hatiin mo siya, hindi mo siya itapon sa joints. Huwag mo siya ilalagay sa gitna para maiwasan natin yung secondary stresses. And centroids of all joint members coincide at the joint. No? So, sa joint lang tayo. And ngayon, pag-uusapan naman natin yung classification of coplanar stresses. Wait lang ang sabi. Okay. So, we have three coplanar trusses. Pag sinabing coplanar, we are only in one plane. No? So, tatlo to. We have the simple truss, the compound, and the complex. Anong pinagkaiba ng simple ng compound at saka ng complex? Ito yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon. So, simple truss, the simplest framework that is rigid or stable is a triangle. Kung maalala ninyo sa movie na yung cartoons, Boss Baby, no? So, halos natin mo siguro napanood yung Boss Baby. Yung sa pinakaumpisa niya, pinakita doon na yung, yung, di ba, yung siya, tapos yung mama niya, yung papa niya, they form a triangle. And the triangle, sinabi niya doon, the triangle is the strongest shape in nature. Tapos lahat ng sibagsakan doon sa triangle, lahat na sira, no? buo pa rin si Triangle. No? So, sa so, simpleng, so, simpleng mga movie na gano'n, uh, as early as that, ay na, kumbaga, nakukwenta na yung mga ganito mga, ano, mga teorya. So, as each additional member of two members is placed to form a truss, no? isang joint yung nadadagdag. E yun yung binanggit ko kanina. Kung tayo ay magdadagdag ng member, no? two members, isang joint yung nadadagdag dyan. Add ka na naman ng dalawang member, maa-add ka na naman ng isang joint. And another, two members, and another joint. Okay. So, kasi, kung ito, no, ito to yung case na to. Halimbawa, wala to yung ano, wala to yung member AD. Kung wala yung member AD, square lang yan. No? Usually, itong mga taga-south, kung siya matagal naman kayo nang babiyahin na from the south. Kung napansin ninyo dun sa may kampanaryo ng San Isidro Labrador Chapel, sa may San Isidro, sa may Bato-Bato, 
Yung dati nilang kampanaryo, ay ganito. Ah, uh, yan. Ganun lang yun sa end. Tapos, ganun din yung kampana sa gita. Ano, makapag-uwi pa ako ng kampana. Okay. Ganun na lang yun. Basta na din yung kampana sa gitna. Tapos, nung katagalan na itong kampanaryo na to ay nagtabingi na. No? Nakaslide na siya. Parang na siyang leaning tower of Pisa. Ano yung dahilan? Ang dahilan nito, hindi kasi siya rigid yung frame. No? Wala siyang mga diagonal bracing. No? Wala siyang diagonal brace. Yun yung dahilan. So, adding the diagonal brace no, to form a truss system ay yung magpapatibay sa structure. And second, we have to compound truss. This truss is formed by connecting two or more simple trusses together. This type of truss is often used for large pans. Pag pinagsama natin yung dalawa o higit pang mga simple trusses, no, makakabuo tayo ng compound truss. Paano tayo makakagawa ng compound truss? Number one, it may be connected by a common joint in a bar. Dagdag ka ng isang bar, e connect mo sa joint na yun, sa joint na yun, ito ay compound truss na. And kung makikita ninyo, ito yung simple truss, no? Simple truss to, simple truss din to. Ngayon, connect natin siya ng isang bar at dalawang joint, yan. So, compound truss na rin siya. Number two, Trusses may be joined by three bars, no? Etong bar na to, one, two, three. Yung tatlong bar na yan ay nag-connect nitong simple truss yung nasa labas na triangle at itong nasa loob na triangle. And we have this bar, one, two, three. Etong tatlong bar na yan, yan yung nag-connect nung simple truss na to at itong simple truss na to. Number three, trusses may be joined together, no? Or may be joined where bars of a large simple trusses called the main truss have been cons uh, substituted by simple trusses called the secondary trusses. No? So, ito mga to, mga secondary trusses yan. Pero sa analysis, ay ginagawa lang natin yung isa. No? Nakikita nyo sa example ninyo. Ito, secondary truss din to. Kumbaga, isa lang yung force na nilalabanan na itong mga to. Hindi na natin ito kinukuha yung reaction ng isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, limang mga members na yan. Kundi kinukonsider natin yan as one member, like this. No? And those are the secondary simple trusses. No? So, kung during the analysis, babalik pa rin tayo sa ganitong mukha. No? Wherein, this is the secondary simple truss like this. No? Wherein, sa totoong buhay, ganito yung mukha niya. Ito, ito. And number three, we have the complex truss. So, ano si complex truss? This truss cannot be classified no, as being either simple or compound if it will not fall to simple or to compound. So, let us consider this as a complex truss. No, usually, itong mga complex truss, itong may mga naka, naka no, overlap no, ng mga members. Ito... So, ito, at saka to. Pero, since nag-cross sila dito, hindi natin ito i-consider, no? Nag-overlap lang yan, no? Walang putol dyan. Hindi natin ito i-consider as a joint. Hindi natin yan siya dyan puputulin. Kung baga, during analysis, itong part na to, isang buo yan. Isang buo din to, at isang buo din to. And, ganyan pag-uusapan naman natin yung uh, determinacy and stability of the container chassis. Uh, if you are going to recall doon sa previous natin na sa beam, ano formula natin doon for determinacy? Any one. Formula natin ang determinacy sa beam? R equals 3N, sir. Yes. R is equal to 3N. This is true para sa beam. Dito naman sa trusses, ang kinoconsider natin dito is the B. B is the number of members. R is the number of reaction. And J is the number of joints. So, mamaya pag-uusapan natin to kasi may sample naman to. Ngayon, if this B plus R is equal to 2J, determinate siya. 
But if this is greater, no? greater than 2j, that is statically indeterminate. And we are going to subtract this b plus r with the 2j, yung difference non, yun yung magiging degree ng indeterminacy. Per se, pag sinabtract natin siya, naging 2. So that is second degree indeterminate. Okay, yan. And pag-usapan naman natin stability. Pagdating sa stability, if the B plus R is less than 2J, no, that would be unstable. And sabi dito, if it is equal to, meaning that is determinate, if it is greater than, that is indeterminate, no? And after that, i-check natin yung kanyang conditions. If you have concurrent reaction, if you have parallel reaction, if there are components of the truss that form a collapsible mechanism, therefore, that would be considered as unstable pa rin. So, pag-uusapan naman natin yung external stability. Yes po. Pero ano pong pagkakaiba ng first degree at second degree? Yung indeterminate. Indeterminate. Yung pagkakaiba po. Apo, ito yan. Ang pagkakaiba niya po. Yung ano po siya yung pagkakaiba ng first degree sa second degree determinate? Yan ba yung tanong? Yes, sir. Okay. If we have the first degree, the first degree indeterminate, na, panari, first degree indeterminate, ah, Nangyayari to kapag halimbawa we have the number of joints kasi kailangan natin ng concrete na ano dito eh, ng concrete na pwede ba doon na lang sa sample kasi parang may indeterminate naman tayo doon para i-discuss ko na lang further doon sa sample. Kasi magbibilang tayo. Sige po. Uh, doon na lang. I-highlight ko na lang siya doon. So, pwede nyo akong i-interrupt. Uh, you can raise your hand or ano ba, oh, open nyo nalang yung mic nyo pag hindi ko napansin kasi naka-share screen ako dito. Kaya nakikita. Screen line nakikita ko dito. Ayan. So, structure is externally unstable if it is reactions, uh, if its reactions rather are concurrent or parallel. So, in this case, this is a pin, no? So, may dalawang reaction yan. At ito ay may isang reaction. At sila ay mag-limit sa point na to, no? Dito sa point na to. Diyan. Diyan sa point na to. Wala na ko yung pangsulat ko. So, dito sa point na yan. yan. Diyan sila mag-limit. Dito kasama yung arrow, ha? Para lang makapunta ko dun. And ito, ito, at ito, sila ay parallel. No? So, it is considered as external, no? No? External, externally unstable. And pag internal naman yung pinag-uusapan, ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is the collapsible mechanism and yung kakulangan ng equation natin to solve. No? The, the kakulangan nitong number of members and the reaction, no? Compared mo dito sa joint, no? So, makikita natin dito, ito yung joint rather, joint times 2, 2J. Ito yung 2J natin. That's 12. While this one is 11, so it's less than. That would be unstable. So, internally. Internal. Kanina, external. And in here, this would form a collapsible mechanism then. And if we are going to compute this, kung titina natin, the number of reactions dito, so you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, binila ko na yung member ha, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Kung makikita natin dito, we have 12 is equal to 12. Pero in this case, itong, itong ano na to, itong square na to, this would form a collapsible mechanism kasi sabi ko nga, dapat ito ay may diagonal member either dyan or dito, no? Para ito ay mag-form ng 
triangle kasi yung triangle dapat yung pinaka basic shape natin okay so let us solve for the example number one so for example number one Pinasabi niya dito to classify each of the trusses in the figure below as stable, unstable, statically determinate, or statically indeterminate. The trusses are subjected to arbitrary external loading that are assumed to be known and can act anywhere on the trusses. So, from our formula, we have the B plus R is equal to 2J. The B stands for the number of members the R stands for the reaction and the J stands for the joint. So, bibilangin muna natin yung number of members. So, we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So, we have here B is equal to 19. And the number of reactions, may isa tayo dito and may dalawa tayo dito. So, you have the reactions is equal to 3. And the number of joints, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, the number of joints is equal to 11. So, applying it to the formula, we have 19 plus 3. Ano yung condition niya when it comes to 2J? No? Ang J is 11. Yan. So, tingnan natin ha. We have 19 plus 3. That is 22. And this is 22 also. So, they are equal. So, meaning this is statically determinate. Di pa tayo dito. So, number of reactions. We have 1, 2, 3. So, lalagay ko na siya dito sa reaction. The number of members, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, plus 9. And we have the number of joints, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 6. That is times 2. So, 12 is equal to 12. So, this is statically determinate. While this one, kung titignan natin, the number of reactions, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Number of members, so reaction dito is 4. The number of members here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So number of n here is equal to 14. Tama bang bilang ko? O oh, may kulang? Ah, yes. Ito pang isa. It's 15. Ayan. So, number of joints. So, number of joints natin, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9. So, we have here 4 plus 15. Ano yan siya sa 9 times 2? So, this is 19 and this is 18. So, 19 is greater than 18. By how much? By 1, no? So, meaning this is statically indeterminate to the first degree. Bakit first degree? Kasi 19 minus 18 is equal to 1. Ito, sasagutin ko na yung tanong ni, ano, ni, sino yun? Si Bardelas, no, Daryl. Uh, First degree indeterminate, ibig sabihin po nito, meron tayong isa dito na hindi mako-compute. Kasi kulang yung number of reactions, na, uh, kulang yung number of equations natin to solve for the number of unknowns. Kasi po, itong reaction at itong number of members, no, sila po ay mga, bakit N yung ginamit ko? B to siya, no? This is B. So, this one is B. Okay. Yung mga B, no, at saka yung R, sila kasi yung unknown. Ito yung nandito, yun yung mapuproduce kasi natin na mga equations. Kung mapapansin ninyo, pag nag-joint method tayo, halimbawa, ito, joint, sa joint A, nag-joint method tayo dyan, ang magagamit lang natin na equation dito ay summation of forces horizontal 
summation of forces vertical, we only have two equations to be used sa joint method. Nagagamit lang natin yung summation of moment doon sa kay section method. Pero sa joint method, hindi natin nagagamit yung summation of moment. Kasi magsisiro lang naman siya pag nag-moment ka dito. No? That's why this is times 2. And every joint, may dalawang equation ka dyan. May dalawang equation ka doon, may dalawang equation ka doon, kaya times 2 yun siya. No? So, yung dami ng equation natin ay 18. 18 yung equation natin, pero yung ano natin, 19. So, ibig sabihin, meron tayong isa na hindi masusolve kasi kulang yung number of equations natin. That's why it is statically indeterminate to the first degree. Pag second degree naman, Ibig sabihin, dalawa na yung kulang natin. Let's say, 20 yung unknowns, pero equation natin, 18 lang. Okay na tayo doon? Daryl? Nasagot ko na yung tanong mo. Okay na tayo doon? Okay. So, dito tayo sa pang-apat. For the number of reactions, we have 1, 2, 3. So, tatlo yung reaction natin. For the number of members, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have 12. And for the number of joints, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So mayroon tayong 6 na joints. So apply natin. 3 plus 12, this is 15. And we have 6 times 2. That is equal to 12. Tag ba? Kulang ba ako ng bilang? Ah, ito pa. Ito, at saka ito. Sorry. So, this is this is 8 and this is 8 so this is 16. Na? So, 15 is less than 16. Ibig sabihin po nito, this is unstable. Pag unstable, wala tayong Determinacy. Hindi siya determinate, hindi siya indeterminate. Unstable lang siya. Pero, pagdating naman sa dito, no? this is statically determinate, this is determinate, and this is indeterminate at the first degree. Sila ay may stability. Tingnan natin, so check natin stability natin. The first condition Meron ba or lahat ba ng reaction ay concurrent at one point? Tingnan natin dito sa una. Concurrent ba siya? Ang sagot ay hindi kasi yung dalawa ay dito. Ang isa ay dito. Papunta naman siya sa taas. So, hindi naman siya tatakbo papunta dito sa joint na to. Ito, hindi rin concurrent. Hindi rin concurrent yung reaction dito. Okay, so the second condition, the second condition is, siya ba ay merong parallel reaction? No? So, hindi naman lahat ng reactions nila ay parallel. So, hindi. Meron bang collapsible mechanisms? May nakikita ba tayong square lang na walang diagonal brace sa tatlong to? So, wala naman. So, ibig sabihin, itong tatlong to ay mga stable. Ito lang yung isa yung unstable. Nakikita ba yung ano, yung mouse pointer? Hello. Nakikita niyo ba yung mouse pointer? Yes, Nakikita po. Nakikita po. Nakikita po. Kasi baka tinuturo ko tapos hindi niyo rin pang nakikita. So ito na yung solution tapos na natin. Ayun, so lesson 2 na tayo. Uh, can I stop first the recording para hindi ga anong mahaba? Mahirapan ako mag-upload. Stop ko lang saglit yung recording.